Hey guys, Billy Knight Designs here. I'm going to do this video, I'm going to do it as quick as I can so it increases the download time, doesn't take forever to download, and maybe I won't try not to be rambling too much. But this uh, video was in response to Heath's idea to make a, a video about what to expect when you buy fiberglass stuff. So first we'll talk about fitment, we'll talk about thickness, we'll talk about air pockets, and just overall neatness of the part. So fitment is, is, is very important, obviously. Um, anytime you buy a part, first thing you want to do is bring it, is get it out of the box and, and put it on the car. You don't want to start sanding, you don't want to paint or, or cut out and start installing electronics. The first thing to be done is to test fit because that's the time when you want to find any potential problems so that they can be addressed before it goes into the painting stages. Um, so, um, you know, ch check your everything, dash, bumper, overhead, lower, wheel, all, the, you know, check everything out. Um, I learned that the hard way many, many years ago. So um, we'll talk about the thickness. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep this thing short, so I'm going to be quick. Um, thickness is, uh, is kind of a gray area. A lot of people want stuff thick. A lot of people doesn't really care. But the thing about thickness is you can create thickness. Uh, it's, it's all in the technique you have of doing fiberglass. I can take two molds, identical. I can put five layers in each mold and I can make one part way thinner than the other part just, just in how I do the process. Um, and obviously you're going to want the part that is, that, that's more compact, but to say that it makes it hard for you to tell on your end um, which, which, it has been, which way has been done, but obviously one way is, the best way is you roll the part out. You, you take a roller and you roll the glass and you pack it down real hard. And then you take a brush and you extract all that resin out, all that excess resin that builds up. This is where you get into real time consuming stuff and this is what a lot, what a lot of people won't do. It's more important to just put it in the mold, lay it up, pop it out, go to the next part. I'm, as most of you know me, I'm very picky and I want things done a certain way. And I do that for all my parts. I, I, I roll them and pack them hard and I, ex, I extract all the excess resin. And I, I really like, it's, it's just important to me how the back side of the part looks as it is how the front side of the part looks. So thickness is kind of a gray area, but obviously it's common sense also. If you've got a bumper, you want the top of the bumper to be very thick because that's what's going to be getting beaten down most of the time by driving, wind, and um, all the other things that can go on. So you would obviously want the top of the bumper. By the way, this is an old custom electronics bumper, what's left of it. I think the guy that owned the car must have turbo boosted or something and it just didn't make it through the uh, through the jump, but this is the top right side of a bumper, and I wanted to show you. I just went out to the car and I grabbed a handful of it and I just pulled it and broke it right off. And I was able to break it off because it's so thin. This part is probably it would be lucky to be dead on an eighth of an inch, and that's probably about uh, three layers of one and a half ounce mat, which is not enough. Uh, maybe. You might could get away with doing that on the bottom of the bumper, but you certainly wouldn't want that on the sides, top, front, or flanges. So um, even, even if this was compacted, you, you, the, the thing is, well, even when you compact or when you, when you pack your, your uh, fiberglass, um, it's, it's only going to pack down so much. So an eighth of an inch is pretty, pretty un, unreasonable for a bumper. Maybe for a console, that's fine, but not a bumper. But on the, on the flip side, you don't want a part that's a quarter of an inch thick all the way around because that's just overkill. And that's, that takes a chance of bending your fenders if it's a bumper. And that makes a dash hard to fit because you're not going to have any flex. So everything's kind of, it's, it's kind of a balancing act. And, it, it, and that comes from the person who builds the stuff and just knowing what they're doing. And, and, and you're trial and error, working this stuff, you know, putting it in and testing it out and seeing, you know, how it goes and how it don't and, and what makes it easy and what makes it, what makes it hard. So... As far as thickness, you know, you kind of just got to be your own best, your, your own judge on that. But obviously, you don't want something paper thin. Um, I can't think. Uh, gosh, I don't know these. These are ground effects I built. These are these are right close to an eighth of an inch because obviously they don't need to be over an eighth, or they'd have trouble fitting on the car. They wouldn't look to. They'd be too bulky. So you, you just kind of have to use your own best judgment on that. Um, the biggest thing about fiberglass, I guess, behind fitment would be air pockets. 
um, you don't want air pockets in a park. And if it does have them, you want to catch them before you go and put paint on it. Because that is, an, that is a dreadful, aggravating nightmare to get something all the way finished and then you get out to a car show and it gets to 100 degrees and all of a sudden you've got big blisters popping up on stuff. And the blisters come especially when the air pocket is close to the gel coat. Anyone who lays up glass, if you've got an air pocket on a flat like this, you can see it when you're laying up. So if you don't address it and you don't fix it, it's just out of pure laziness. It's not because you didn't see it. The ones that hide from you are the ones that's up in the corners, like up in here. Um, those are the tricky ones. They, they, you know, they can slip up on you. If you've already got fiberglass pieces, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you a trick here to check and see if you've got any um, if you got any air pockets in your fiberglass. And bear in mind, you're only worried about the air pockets. If it does have you, you don't want any at all. But if you've got them toward the surface, that's the one that's got to be it's got to be located and repaired. If there's if it's a, a part that's five and six layers thick or whatever, and the pockets are toward the back, it's not such a big deal because if it if it swells, it's going to swell toward the back, not the front. So get you a screwdriver. Um, you can you can get a rubber mallet. You can bop it with a mallet, you can get a screwdriver, put a rag over it, and just kind of push back and forth, put some pressure down, and if there's an air pocket behind the gel, you're going to bust the fiberglass when you're putting the pressure. It, it, it'll crack it, and then when you crack it, obviously you're going to know there's something there, so then you would take a Dremel or whatever and dig it out, fill it full of filler, block it off, prime it, and then, you know, you can go and paint your part at that point. But it's very important to find those because I'm going to tell you, you, you do not want to find them after all the paint and the electronics and everything's installed because it'll just make you pull your hair out. On the edges, you can take a screwdriver also and just kind of hold down on both sides of the screwdriver and pull towards you or, or push away, you know, go back and forth. And those, those expose very easy when you put pressure on corners. Those will, if there's a pocket in here, it'll, it'll pop out real easy. And, and that's not totally uncommon. Um, I mean, I, if you're finding big pockets, that's not good. But I mean, you know, little little tiny pockets are, are, are it's not totally uncommon. But it's all in the process of how you do it. If the person laying glass is just going in and putting mat right in here, you're gonna have po you're gonna have air pockets in the corners. I can tell you right now. Um, there's a process we use in, in the special effects world. It's uh, it's called mud, and I use that on all my parts. Um, it, it, it eliminates the potential to have air bubbles in the crack, in, in the creases, in, in the folds or whatever. And that, uh, that makes it a lot easier, cause especially in prep, because all my parts, I always check for air pockets before I ever send it to you guys, because I'd rather it be me that find it, not you. So I go over all these parts with a screwdriver, <clears throat> and I try to find that stuff ahead of time. And, Excuse me, boss. sorry, that's my phone going off. <clears throat> Um, so that's what you need to know about air pockets. We'll talk about just overall neatness. Sorry, I'm about to choke here. <clears throat> Allergies. As far as neatness, everybody knows. You guys that do know me know I'm extremely picky. Um, Excuse me, boss. You I'm popping today. Message. Let me see who that is. Sorry. Um, D -D -D. Okay, it's AT and T. Not working. Um. So we're going to uh, it's talking about. Oh, Excuse me, boss. You sorry about that. <laughs> as far as neatness, um, you, you, most most of you know me. Know I'm picky, so I, I want stuff very neat. I want it just as neat on the inside as I do on the outside. And when you spend that kind of time on parts, people can see that. It's it's you, it's, it's it's blindly obvious. It's plainly obvious. So this is not a very neat part, as you can see. This is kind of a a rough layup. It's it's inconsistent. Um, nothing flows together. It hasn't been sanded. Um, it's just, it's got drips and stuff all in it. That to me is unsatisfactory. I mean, not every like I say, not everybody's is as anal as I am about it. But I don't like that. Um, other things to look for on on the inside of a part. It, it should be uniform from all the way across. It should be smooth. It should be flat. Um, it should all run together. There shouldn't be a wad sticking up or a hole or there shouldn't be a, a puddle of just loose resin that's, that's accumulated in the bottom. There shouldn't be fibers. See these little fibers? I can take and pull them off right now. There shouldn't be loose fibers that aren't wet in this part. I can tell you this part was not, it was, they did not use a roller on this part. I can tell by looking at it. 
when you use a roller, you won't have these little shards that are, that are dry like this. A roller will compact everything and wet out everything. So this was just done with a brush, and I can kind of see the build up here. Um, overall, you know, nothing, nothing great about this, what's left of this piece at all, and that's probably why it's in pieces, is because it wasn't laid up properly. Um, I got, I have a ground effect here. This is fixing to ship out, but this, maybe this can kind of show you. Let me get up here close. Uh, did he... See how everything is nice and uniform? There's no high spots, low spots, puddles, ducktails. Uh, there's no fibers that's not wet. Everything's wet. Everything's done. And like I say, when I was in the body shop, we finished all the insides of our parts. You know, fenders got jammed. Uh, trunk lids got jammed. Everything got jammed. And I've kind of carried that over with me. Um, working here, you know, doing what I do is, is I like to see the backs of the parts finished. So I go in, sand all, all the backs of my parts, and I prime them in a black primer. And then I send them out to you guys. And that just, uh, you know, I, I like to think that that kind of tells you guys I spent the time on the part to, you know, to make it worth your while. You guys spend a lot of money on this stuff, so you should get something nice. And I think that just goes an extra step. Um, so the main thing is just be sure you can run your hand in it. If you can run your hand in it like that, put pressure down and rub back and forth, and you don't end up with a handful of glass or bleeding all over the place, then that's what you're looking for. That's what you want. Um, hope this video helps you guys. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, if you've got any questions, just post them under the video. And hope this, like I say, hope this helps. And take care. See you guys.